world changers it's monet with tick life and today we're talking about summer prep so the first video in my new teacher series was about graduating and getting hired and how to get that job the second one was about what should you do now that you have gotten the job and this one is going to talk about what are some great things that you can do during the summer to make your transition into the classroom smooth simple and exciting so the first thing that I want to suggest that you do during the summer is figure out what are your routines and rituals. What does that mean? So the best thing that you can do as a new teacher is have order. Order doesn't mean that your room is like a jail cell, but it does mean that when students come in, they know exactly what to do and how to do each day. So think about what are going, what you're going to have as your class rules and expectations. That's like the foundation and the core of your classroom. Now me personally, I don't have rules. I have class values. I decided to do that this past school year because I started really thinking about how can I prepare my students for success outside of the classroom just as citizens in our community. And so I decided to teach them about values. And I thought the best way to do that each and every day is to have four class values. I will say that I feel that by having class values along with having morning meetings um, and things that are in, in circles, as restorative circles, I feel like this really helped to develop my students, not just academically, but socially. Um, and it really helped to build a healthy, positive community within my classroom. Now, what I want to suggest in this same bubble <clears throat> of information is think about simple things. So think about the small things and the big things. A lot of times we think about rules like keep your hands to yourself, be a first time listener, um, stay in your space, those type of rules. But really think about your day to day routine. What time will students go to the bathroom? How do you want them to go to the bathroom? Can they go to the bathroom during instruction? When can they sharpen their pencils? When can they talk? Like those are things that you really want to outline. And so what I did, um, especially the first month of school, um, not just the first week, I didn't focus like hardcore stop let's talk let's 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 just dig into rules none of that but I just made sure that each and every day I kind of mentioned and had someone uh, tell me um, so-and-so how do we line up we have a 3s line silent still straight how do when do we sharpen our pencils we sharpen our pencils in the morning and in the afternoon if we don't have a sharpened pencil we get a dull pencil certain things little things like that help your day to go very smooth. I even had to tell my fourth graders, if there is somebody at the sharpener, you stay at your seat. Because I didn't like having a long line of people during independent time trying to sharpen their pencils because what would tend to happen is, yes, you are standing in line and you're waiting your turn to sharpen your pencil, but now you're starting to have conversations that are not academically based. So what I had asked them to do at the beginning of the year, I let them know, hey, we sharpen our pencils at the in the beginning of the day, the end of the day. If we don't have a sharpened pencil, we get a dull. If you sharpen your pencil during your independent time or your center time, if somebody's at the sharpener, you need to wait because I don't want to see a line. So those little things make your day go smoother. Um, things like how are they going to line up in line? Now, granted, you do not know your students and you don't know your personalities, but the first day you want to have order. You want to establish order and routine with your students. So this could be an ABC order. This could be table by table. It could be girls in the front, boys in the back. And I know you're like, do I really have to think about these things over the summer? No, you don't. However, I am suggesting that you do think about the little things and the big things um, so that on day one, when you're decorating your room, when you're creating your syllabus, when you're just really trying to get an idea of how to use your instructional time, it makes a difference. The next thing that I want to mention with the first uh, suggestion is develop a syllabus. Um, I know a lot of times, especially on the elementary level, teachers do not do this. 
However, I like to have this given to parents on the first day. It's actually a part of my first day activity. Um, last year, I actually thought about developing a scavenger hunt. So once um, students come in, um, at one point in the day, I pass out the class syllabus. And it's very child friendly. It's not big words. It's not like a college syllabus or anything like that. Um, but it just really gives a clear picture as to who I am. Like I have a little paragraph where I introduce myself and I tell some, some fun facts about myself. Then I share the class values and then um, important dates, reminders, what supplies do they need? How are we gonna be using these supplies? Um, and then I have my class dojo rewards and then I have my consequences for rewards. And so that puts everybody on the same page, including students, parents and yourself and so what I like for students to do I thought about taking um, little pieces from the syllabus and creating a scavenger hunt within the classroom and then having like a little prize for the person that completes the scavenger hunt the first in first place basically so then that syllabus goes home and I send a dojo message to parents saying hey please uh, read the syllabus with your scholar and uh, sign and return and then usually by Friday I try to have a hundred percent return meaning all students have returned it I like for parents to have a copy of the syllabus so that way should anything happen on the good end or bad end everybody knows the expectation everyone knows the consequence and no one can say well I did not know that if my student didn't have 45 points by the end of the month they could not participate in the class dojo party it's little things like that so cover yourself in the beginning and not the end so by having something written that everybody's on the same page about it truly makes a difference and again it's nothing that is like super duper you know big words and long sentences it could be just a front page it could be front and back my syllabus is front and back um, it's not long at all but again I love for everyone to know how our year is going to be and just to have that drum starting to beat and everybody marching to the same drum okay so the second thing that you can be doing during your summer prep is choosing and studying your resources so what does that mean depending on what grade level you are in depending on what county state all those great things there may be some resources that the school specifically wants you to use for a content area like I said in my second video, when you go into that building to meet the principal, to meet your grade chair and all of that great stuff, see if you can get your hands on those required materials so that you can study them over the summer so that when you're lesson planning come July, August, you're familiar with the content, you're familiar with the book, you're familiar with the website that, that students need to use, and you're confident. And just being confident as a new teacher goes a very long way. Not arrogant, but confident. So. Um, if you if you're in a school or a county where resources are not given, this is very you know frequent. Okay, there there are some counties that go for what you know. You have a degree, use it. So I know my first year of teaching, I had a supportive uh, administrative team. I had a wonderful grade chair and a, a wonderful um, grade of uh, teammates, but. I did not have a lot of resources and so that's when I really started looking at Teachers Pay Teachers. That's when I really started researching um, things that I could use to engage my students um, with digital learning. Um, and over the years, I have like a pocket full of resources that I use every year. Um, I've kind of gotten away from Teachers Pay Teachers. I will look at it every now and then, but um, my third year of teaching, I found a website called Super Teacher Worksheets, and I mentioned it last year um, in my vlogs that I use Super Teacher Worksheets. I also love News ELA. I love CNN 10. I love Read readworks.org, and I also love Reading A to Z. I'm an ELA teacher. I've always been ELA. So those are resources that I use no matter what. And over the years, I've gotten better with them. Um, this year, I'll be using Class Class Kick uh, quite a bit um, because the school that I will be teaching at, they have one-to-one -one devices. And I feel like that'll be a great resource 
to keep the kids engaged along with monitoring their progress as they're completing things. So the, that's just how far I am thinking out. But again, um, if you're at a school that uses Lucy Calkins, for example, see if you can get your hand at least on the first unit book, whatever book you're going to use for your first unit, and study it and figure out those learning targets and find um, anchor charts and lessons that maybe you want to incorporate. Reading A to Z actually has some great lessons. Um, I did not know that until this year. I always use reading A to Z to print out level text, but this year someone actually showed me how they have lessons on main idea, inferring, um, text structure, I mean, just wonderful um, texts and quizzes. So I use that in actually one of my mini lessons and I'll put the little links in the video so that you can see me utilizing reading A to Z and I actually liked it. Um, I, to my knowledge, I feel like reading A to Z, those lessons, I only saw them go up to fifth grade um, and I was teaching four. So that kind of helped when I was doing like my gifted and my higher thinkers. Um, but now that I'm doing five, six, I don't know how well it will be for me but i probably will still look at some of the text for whole group instruction so again during summer prep think about your rituals and routines that you're going to have in your classroom think about creating that syllabus also think about what resources you need and get familiar with those resources so that when you go back to school and it's time to start lesson planning and teaching, you know exactly what you're gonna be reaching for and using. So let's transition to the fun side, right? Like every college student talks and dreams about how they're going to decorate their classroom. This is that time, like it's here. You've graduated, you've gotten the job, you're about to just spew out all your creativity into this classroom. So now think about how are you going to create your learning environment? The learning environment is crucial. Um, it's very important to have a positive learning environment, to have a purposeful learning environment, meaning to have print rich content on your walls. I never decorate every single wall. And I think this is something that some teachers do that isn't the wisest thing because as you're teaching and you're develop, developing anchor charts and creating posters, where are these things gonna go if every wall is decorated with something? So it's okay if you have the shell of your room, you know, you have that color theme and you have like your walls labeled for different content areas. That's great. It's great to have everything labeled in your library. Like there are some things that I definitely get because it's a part of organization um, and it's festive, but leave room because what should be happening, and I hate to kind of like say that, but in my mind, I feel like effective teachers, as they're teaching, the, the students are, you know, helping, they're contributing to that learning. And then you put that on the wall somewhere. But again, if it's like covered with posters and flyers and bears and turtles, I mean, where is it going to go? So um, really identify your spaces. Hopefully, again, like in that last video, I talked about going into the school and taking a picture of your classroom. That is your key. So as you are in Home Goods and uh, Michaels and Target, you can look at that phone and say, okay, this wall is about this big. So if I buy this storage unit, it can fit here. Because what you don't want to do is overspend, buy some things, and you have absolutely no space for it. Think about storage. As a teacher, storage is your life. It's almost like your kitchen. Like I hate kitchens that don't have cabinets because it's like, uh, how am I gonna cook and make dinner if I can't even put my pots anywhere? The same thing goes with your classroom. It's very important to have storage because that helps with your organization and you don't want a cluttered environment because a cluttered environment can lead to a cluttered mind. And if you have a cluttered mind, come on, how are they gonna really do their best? So um, I know something that I love to do that actually kind of gives me peace is crafting so last year you saw that i made the read signs and i'll be using them again this year and that was so it made my heart happy and then also i had the floating books so this year i'm actually making wooden risers i'm so excited 
I thought about purchasing them and then I thought about asking a guy to do it for me, like finding some carpenter that would just help a single mom out. But then I was like, girl, you can do this. We're gonna buy this wood and we're gonna get some nails and we're gonna build some risers because I really want my whole group time. I don't really want them at a desk per se. I really want it to be like an auditorium. So in my classroom is big enough where I believe I can do this along with flexible seating. So flexible seating allows you to have more room in the classroom. But I want like in front of my board, I want it to be riser, low table, stool, 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 riser. So I'm doing two risers and they're gonna have two rows. So um, I know you're like, what? But in my mind, I see it. And what I also want is for me to be able to lift the seats and I can use that as storage. This is in my mind, I will be making it. <laughs> it may be a hot mess. I don't think it's gonna be a hot mess. I think I'm intelligent enough to like figure out these dimensions and get it done. But I've seen people do the, the uh, stage and then they open it and it's storage within the stage and it has wheels on it and it's mobile. Like, yeah. But then I was like, it's fifth and sixth graders. I don't want these tall individuals on this stage. I just think it's giving a platform for no reason. This is my personal opinion. If you do it, you rock. However, I want my auditorium feel. So I'm like, I'm gonna do these risers. So that's my craft. I don't really have to buy anything because again, like with me going into my sixth year, I pretty much have everything I need. Like I don't need storage bins. I did that last year. I already know my color theme. I'm doing, I'm going back to like the rustic brick, black, country homey type of feel thing like i'm not really changing that so um yeah i know my theme we're good to go but for you what i would suggest think about what you are trying to achieve within your classroom if you're really in a um community where you feel like students need to be motivated or they need to grow in a certain area i've done it one year where the um word i chose a word and i designed my room around that word so when i taught third grade i chose the word limitless and when i said limitless the phrase that came to my mind was sky's the limit so i did a cloud theme and i actually had clouds on my ceiling and i had the word limitless on the back um the back cabinets and then I put like fluff, like pillow fluff around the words to make it seem like the words were floating on clouds. And then I did a baby blue color thing. So baby blue and white was my color thing, but it was focused around that word because I wanted those students to know that like sky's the limit, you're intelligent. Like you have strengths, you have weaknesses, weaknesses, but don't worry, whatever you aspire to be, you can do it. Because I got tired of hearing students saying, oh, I can't do that because, and da, 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 da. no, you're limitless. So that year I chose a word. There have been years where I've like legit just picked up something and said, oh, I love these colors. I think that's how um, my shine year came about. I really like that teal Tiffany blue and I matched it with black because the fadeless paper that I bought was black and I was like, oh, this is nice. And then I put white in there to brighten it up because that black was so heavy. And then I chose the word shine because I wanted my scholars to shine perform in a way, behave in a way that you shine, that you are a light. So I had the word shine on the wall and then I had a lot of teal organizers and um, borders and then I had lights everywhere. And that's actually how I got the lights on the ceiling, which I've done for the past three, three years or three classrooms. Um, so I put the lights on the ceiling and I absolutely love it, especially when we're doing independent reading or deer time. I'll drop the lights down and I turn on my lamps and it's so soothing and the kids read. So it's amazing how over the time span of my career, I've developed my, my way, my way of teaching, my way of creating learning spaces, my way of organizing, like what works for everybody may not work for you. And that's the thing about being a new teacher. You're learning yourself. You know yourself as a woman or a man. You know yourself as a son and daughter. You may know yourself as a spouse and a mom. However, you don't know yourself as a teacher yet. And I feel like you don't get that until time. 
So don't go broke trying to like create this fantasy land of a classroom. If you can write some grants to get some money, if the, if the church is gonna donate to you, awesome. If parents are gonna give to you, awesome. Um, definitely ask your school if they do a reimbursement. Some counties, um, they've gotten like a, like little visa cards, almost like gift cards of like 125 and teachers could use that. Now, does everybody do that? Absolutely not. And that's why we have a lot of, you know, unhappy teachers when it comes to like pay and support because a lot of teachers, they make sure that their learners have everything they need in their classroom. And that that's not free, it's not given. So that is something that comes out of your own pocket. So try to be as strategic as possible. Some people like to wait and see what their students will bring in at meet the teacher night. Um, and on the first day of school and then they make their community bands. Some teachers like to say, hey, bring in what you have and if you don't have it, oh well. Um, it just depends on you, but definitely think about how you're gonna organize it. Is it gonna be according to, to a theme? Is it gonna be according to a word? Be uh, conscious of your um, grade level. I thought about choosing a novel from a novel study that we're gonna do for the school year and transforming the room based on that. I mean, there are so many ways to do it. There's inspiration everywhere. I know some people like to do Harry Potter things and I'm not, I promise you, I am not, you know, picking at anybody. I'm just sharing my thoughts, okay? I know some people like to um, do Harry Potter things, but they don't read Harry Potter. And it's like, so how do your students really get the fullness of this experience if they can't make any connection to it like of course they probably might have looked at the movie but everybody don't like Harry Potter um, I know according to Mr. B he reads uh, Pete the cat and he had that as his uh, decor one year and it looked amazing and I'm pretty sure the students really enjoyed it because they knew who Pete the cat was because they had they're reading the, the books so really think about incorporating your subject matter if you're a math teacher I mean rock it out i would have plus pluses minuses percentages like all over the place it would just be interesting and i also thought like if i taught history because i will be taking um the certificate the certif certification test for high school english and history geography or something like that um probably next year i'm not going to high school anytime soon but i do want to go ahead and get that up under my belt so if an opportunity does present itself i can kind of entertain it but um, I thought about if I taught history, converting my room into like a huge timeline. And as me and the students traveled through time, mm -hmm, we would fill in the blanks on our wall. I mean, like guys, make it fun. They, they're coming to you, you know, break the narrative of school sucks and all teachers are mean and things like that you're like, they, they get into that. They really do, I don't care what age you are. I've seen people, really go with that Starbucks set up and flex it out and kids want to come to school they want to be in that they want to be in a relationship they want to work you know like it, it really does act as a motivation so really be thinking about those things and um, I hope that all of my tips have been extremely helpful for you today so the last thing that I'm going to mention before this video is over, um, definitely look into trainings that could better prepare you with you being a new teacher. Again, you don't know it all. And don't worry, veterans don't know it all either. Um, education is forever evolving and changing. So it's always great if you can find conferences, workshops, PDs that maybe your district is providing over the summer and attend one. You do not have to work your entire summer. Definitely rest Build your energy, build your patience and your tolerance. That's so important because the next 10 months are gonna be a roller coaster. But at the same time, if you can sharpen your sword by going to an hour training or going to a day training, definitely do it. I know my uh, previous county, they, um, they actually paid. It went towards your July check, I believe, if you went to a conference um, during the month of June. So that could be some more shopping money, right? So I hope that you guys really enjoyed this video. My question of the day is, what are you going to do during the summer to prep for the new school year? It's really simple. Please let me know what you're doing. I've already shared my crafts with you. Um, I can't wait to read yours. I hope that you guys have really enjoyed this series. I think I have about two more videos just targeted and geared for 
my new actually three videos i have three more videos for new teachers and i hope that you guys are enjoying this series please make sure that you share it with others and i can't wait to see your answers below if you have not already subscribe so that you know uh, when I'm producing these videos and when they're available for you to access. There is a little bell on the side that actually helps as well and gives it a thumb up. Hope you guys have a great day. Enjoy your week. Congratulations on making it thus far in your educational journey. And remember, you rock, so continue to tick on.